So in this gear train, we have three gears. We have gear A, which is our input, driving gear B, and then gear B, driving gear C, which is our output. Now the important thing here is that gear B has no impact on the gear ratio. It's called an idler gear, and it makes no difference how many teeth are on that gear. What's important is the ratio of the output to the input, as we saw in the earlier video. So I've specified here that gear B has six teeth, but in actual fact, it makes no difference to the gear ratio for the gearbox. All that idler gear does is change the direction of gear C. If you recall last time, we had two gears. The input was rotating clockwise and the output was rotating anti-clockwise. But in this case, gear A drives gear B. So gear A turns clockwise and gear B turns anti-clockwise. But if gear B turns anti-clockwise, then gear C turns clockwise, the same as our input. So the purpose of our idler gear is to change the direction of rotation. Now we've got various different information for this question. We've got the number of teeth on A and the number of teeth on C, which we need to calculate our gear ratio. We've got the input speed and the input torque, and we've also got the output torque. So in this example, we've measured the output torque, and what we're going to calculate is the efficiency of our gearbox. So the first thing we can do here is calculate our input power because we have all of the information to do this. So P in equals, our formula is 2 pi nt over 60, but because we're doing the input, we need to do na ta over 60. We have 2 pi times na, which has given us 250, times ta, which has given us 120, over 60, giving us an input power equal to 3142 watts, or we'll call that 3.14 kilowatts. Okay, now if we wanted to calculate the output power, we would need the output speed and the output torque. But at the moment, we don't know the output speed. We can find it. First of all, we need to find our gear ratio and then we can find our output speed. So gear ratio is the teeth on the output over the teeth on the input. So 20 over eight, which is 2.5. And we also know that our gear ratio equals our input speed over our output speed. Therefore, our output speed equals our input speed divided by our gear ratio. Now our input speed is 250 RPM and our gear ratio is 2.5, giving us an output speed of 100 RPM. Now as we would expect, gear C is rotating more slowly than gear A. In fact, gear A needs to turn two and a half times in order to get one turn of gear C. So now we can calculate our output power. And when we calculate our output power, we're going to expect it to be less than our input power of 3.14 kilowatts. We have P out equals two pi N, it's output power. So NC, TC, over 60. 2 pi times NC, we just calculated as 100. TC was given as 250. All divided by 60, giving us an output power equal to 2618 watts, or 2.62 kilowatts. Now finally we can calculate our efficiency because we have our output power 2.62 divided by our input power 3.14 and we times that by 100 to get a percentage giving us 83.4%. Now in this case we wouldn't have been able to calculate the efficiency from the torque values because we didn't know the value of the ideal torque. Alternatively, we could have calculated the ideal torque 
and then use that to determine the efficiency. And I'll just show you how we would do that now. So first of all, we would need to calculate our ideal output torque. So TC, and I'll just call that subscript I for ideal. Well, the ideal output torque, if you recall, is the gear ratio times the input torque. And our gear ratio was 2.5. Our input torque is 120. 2.5 times 120 gives us an ideal output torque equal to 300 newton meters. Now we know that our measured output torque was 250 newton meters. So we're not achieving the ideal quantity and the reason we're not achieving the ideal quantity is because of our losses or our inefficiencies. So this time to calculate our efficiency, we would have to do TC actual divided by TC ideal. It's basically a ratio of what we're getting out compared to what we're putting in or what we're getting out compared to the ideal value. So 250 over 300. We then multiply that by 100 to give us an answer as a percentage, and that comes out to be 83.3. Now, when we use the previous method, we got 83.4, but the difference there is as a result of rounding our power values for the power in and the power output in the previous method. So in closing to this video, if we were to have more than one gear in between our input and our output, providing they're connected as a simple gear train, one in contact with the other, then the only thing that would affect the gear ratio would always be the number of teeth on the output and the number of teeth on the input. It makes no difference the size or number of idler gears we have here, providing we have a simple gear chain. And in fact, the only thing that would be affected is the direction of rotation of the output shaft.